Hello and welcome to Friday Night Football on PlayOnSports.com. It's the PlayOnSports.com pregame show live from Bobcat Field in Greenbrier, Tennessee. I'm Adam Hollis along with Dave Knott. We'll be bringing you all the action tonight on your destination for high school sports, PlayOnSports.com. We've got a pivotal District 9 matchup, Macon County Tigers coming to Bobcat Field to visit Greenbrier. And it is, while on paper doesn't look like a big game, it's a pretty big game, Dave Not. Yes, it is a big game for both teams. Both teams have a goose egg in the win column for the district. And uh, one win could change everything, put them right back in the race. Well, it, uh, it is both two teams starving for, starving for a win in the district. Macon County comes in 0-5, um, have had a couple of close calls. Greenbrier comes in two and four. Their leading rusher is out tonight. Got hurt, I was told, last play of the game last week. So that's going to be a tough blow for Greenbrier to overcome. Uh, what do you think we can expect from the Bobcats? I think they're going to uh, come out, start, try to try to set the tone, uh, hold on to the ball, play some, play some uh, the clock down, let it run, and uh, keep the defense off the field. These two offenses are pretty similar in their approach. They're both ground attacks. Uh, we'll see a lot of option from both of these offenses. And uh, we will be right back with the start of tonight's action between Macon County and Greenbrier. We are back and set for kickoff. Zach Gazi set to kick it off for Macon County. And it's a deep kick. Greenbrier is going to field it, trying to get back to the middle of the wedge. And not much going on. They break a tackle. Nice return by Kobe Wilson. He was trying to get it to the field. And he's going to start this ball. The right hash about the 10-yard line. So good kick by Macon County. Good coverage. Good kick, good coverage. They blew up that wedge and got in there and made a tackle. So here's Greenbrier on offense, led by quarterback number 12, Nick Young. In the backfield, you're going to see number 44, Nicky Lynn, number 6, Carson Elder, and number 7, Chris Johns. And we'll get to the rest of the lineup here in a minute. Greenbrier trades the formation into the boundary. And the give is to Carson Elder up front. Macon County saying they turned it over and they have. So the first play of the game and Carson Elder coughs it up and Macon County's in business with some pretty good field position. That's definitely not the way Greenbrier wanted to start on this homecoming night. That's for sure. So we'll, we'll, we'll flip the script here pretty quick as Macon County goes on offense, led by number 15 quarterback Aaron Carter. He'll have Shane Hessen behind him. And the give is to Hessen up the middle. And a productive first down play inside. He's going to pick up about three, which is going to bring up a second and seven. Carter gets the call. Looks like both teams are going to shuffle in. And now we've got Carter in the shotgun with Hessen to his right. Trips to the right. Option to the field. Here's Hessen. He's got some room. He's inside for a... No, they're going to call him down at the... Call him down at the two. Tough vantage point for us. Nice looking job. They do call it a touchdown. 
Nice little speed option. They did call it a touchdown. Wow. Good run. Real late call by the by the official. Either that or I'm just not paying attention. And here's Zach Ghazi with the extra point. And it's up and it's good. And just like that, Macon County on the road, up 7 nothing. That's got to make them feel pretty good. It's a great way to start the game. They definitely don't look like an 0-5 team. They're coming out fighting. Well, turnovers will, you know, anytime you're, you're struggling, turnovers are, you know, that's, that's the antidote. That's the medicine you want. You want to be able to get some turnovers, create some short fields. And I don't know if the field position could have been any better. I don't know, uh, you know, if the Tigers could have dreamt a better start to this football game. That was, that was a great start, great kick, great coverage. First play, Greenbrier's offense, they fumble. Two plays later, they got seven points. So deep for Greenbrier will be Kobe Wilson, Shane Hessen in the middle, and Paul Gonzer, who also will see significant action on offense this evening. Macon County started the game kicking it deep to Wilson, and Greenbrier started the game trying to bring that return all the way back to the field. Just 57 seconds gone by in this opening quarter, and this time they squib it. And this is trouble. Kobe Wilson scoops it on one bounce like a baseball player and caught it on the run. That was a great job by Kobe Wilson. It was a great job. He just caught it on the run and outran the kicker and was lucky to get run down. So here's Greenbrier on offense again. They will have a first and 10 from just about midfield. Their side of the 50 on the 49. And here's Young. Play action pass. And the lefty's going for the bundle. And he was trying to hit Chris Johns on the post on the back side and just a little overthrown. Pretty good coverage back there by Macon County. Real nice coverage. I think they had him wrapped up all the way down. Good thing it was overthrown. It could have been intercepted. That was Stephen Reagan. Aaron Carter is your safety. And then Daniel Gregory is the other corner. Three deep secondary. Here's Young, and we've got a penalty. He was trying to run. I believe it's Carson, a false start. Yeah, he was trying to run Carson Elder over the right side with Nikki Lynn leading the way. And we are going to have a procedure penalty, I believe, on Greenbrier. Yes, we are. So two drives so far for Greenbrier, and we have a turnover that leads to Macon County Tiger points. And now we've got a second and long from the 44-yard line. Back them up five. A little sloppy start right here for the Bobcats, wouldn't you say? This is not what they had in mind in the locker room before they came out. Greenbrier trades again. They trade Tyler Hall and Johns, and the give is up the middle to Elder. And he is close to a first down. I believe they're going to mark him a yard shy, which is going to bring, down, bring up a third and one. Real nice run inside. Good hole. That was a good hole. That was a good, good tough run, too. Makes it third and manageable. They're going to call it two. Good job up front by Brady Doris, Kenny Abel, Tyler Pendergrass, Kevin Abel, and Todd Lynch on that last play. Hall and Johns down to the right. And we're going to have another penalty, or we're going to have a timeout Greenbrier. So they didn't like what they had called on third and two. And part of that might have been what we saw up here, Dave. It looked like it was going to be about third and one. And they may have sent in a call and then realized it, it's probably closer to three than it is one. So it's a it's a, a longer third down. Well, you want to be sure you got the right play in there, especially the way that they've started. Uh, you got to put something in there to gain, gain a little confidence and 
hopefully put some points on the board. Well, based on that last run, I would expect this ball to be handed to Mr. Elder. Greenbrier's done a nice job with changing strengths on their formation. I like what they're doing. Trading Hall and Johns. I would expect a trade and then maybe some sort of pickup motion and trying to get maybe an option to the field here. Because one thing we know about Nick Young, he can run. Great crowd here at Bobcat Field. They really turned out for homecoming. A lot of green and white. So here's Young. And the give is inside to Nicky Lynn. And he is over a pile, and it's going to depend on the spot. It's going to be close. It's going to be real close. So they gave it to the, they gave it to the big boy. And they're going to measure this one. This is going to be close. This is close, but I believe they have this by the nose of the football. Let's see if I'm right. First down by the nose of the football. That's got to be a confidence builder for Greenbrier. Keeps the drive alive, which is never a bad thing. 9.57 remaining in the first quarter. We've had a lot of action here for just a couple of minutes gone by. The officiating crew will reset this clock and we will start to tick away. Young back to Elder and he'll pound up inside for three or four. They're not they're not going away from their game plan, that's for sure. No, they're sticking with it. That's a good lead block by uh, Nicky Lynn. Picked up a few yards. He is a big boy in there. He is a big boy. I mean, he just looks like a fullback linebacker. And it's Elder again. Dragon, folks. Good stop there by Reagan and Carter. And K.J. Kitchen also in on the stop. Again, we're back to third and manageable. Third and three, probably getting close to four down, four down country, I would imagine. So that kind of changes how you might call this third down if you know in advance you're going to go for it on fourth down. Exactly. Majiglio is split out wide left. Hall and Johns at the bottom of the screen. And here's Nicky Lynn, and he's got the first down. Just give it to the fullback, let him make his own hole. He is a load to bring down. The way he hurtled through the line there, I thought he might have something, but that was a good stop by Shane Hessen, inside linebacker for the Tigers. Now here's Young bringing him out. Majiglio split out real wide to the left at the top of the screen, just inside the numbers, and the give is to Lynn. Nice cut, but a better tackle. Yeah, Macon County was ready for that one. Aaron Carter, the free safety, was downhill in a hurry along with Kitchen and Dylan Gregory on that stop. He picked up a couple. And Majiglio is on an island out there with Daniel Gregory. And here's Elder. And he gets to the outside, and he'll be tackled by Daniel Gregory, who came off coverage to come up and make that stop just short of the first down. Pretty good pickup and a nice bounce by Elder. I've already seen on a couple of plays where Kevin Abel gets, gets around the pulling guard, gets around the outside, and is able to get to the second level to 
free up a little run space. They have done a nice job on those outside runs. And I believe that's part of that. That's part of their play action package as well. We'll see guards out leading the quarterback on some of the boot and waggle stuff. Nick Young inside to Lynn. And again, it's Hessen and Carter on the tackle. Those two are getting worn out right now by Nikki Lynn because everything Greenbrier is doing inside right now has been creased. Nikki Lynn, six foot, 255. I'd like to see that coming after you. Now, if that's a legitimate listing, that is, I, I think I'm okay to say that's a load, right? That is, that is a load. That, that's a load. Paul Gonzer just checked in number 30 for Lynn at fullback. Majiglio down to the bottom of the screen, and now we have Hall and Johns trading sides. And the give is going to be to Elder, and he makes a nice run on the right side there. Could have been brought down a little earlier. Tanner Lowhorn on the stop for Macon County, and Kitchen was there again. That was a great, great kick out block by Kenny Abel. Pick up the end right there. This is uh, turning into a pretty nice drive here, Mr. Knott. They are, uh, this is what they meant to do when they first, when they got the ball the first time. Eat clock up, run the ball, and uh, keep their defense off the field. And Macon County has struggled getting off the field on those critical third downs. Gonzer still in the backfield. Now John's on the pickup motion, and it's Gonzer inside, pounding his way down to about the two or three. So Lynn's backup comes in and starts to do some work, and I believe we are going to have a first and goal for the Bobcats. Five twenty-five remaining first quarter. Young getting the signals from the sideline. Now he's got the play, and I would expect this. I would expect this ball to go to Mr. Elder, but I'm no genius. Here's Young. John's on the pickup motion, and here's Gonzer, and I believe he is up and over the pile for a touchdown. Bobcats. I don't think they were going to be denied on that score. So here's Nick Kelly to come on and try the extra point to tie this ball game. See if Mr. Kelly can't knock this thing up at seven. Snap is good, hold is good, kick is good. And we've got a seven, seven ball game. Good drive by Greenbrier. Yeah, they did exactly what they needed to do. Uh, good looking drive, ate up a lot of clock and uh, kept the defense off the field. And did a lot of work with their fullback. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for the Play On Sports School broadcast program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web on the PlayOnSports.com website. For more information, go to PlayOnSports.com slash SBP. That's SBP for School Broadcast Program. Well, now we'll get to see Macon County's return unit for the first time tonight and Greenbrier's kickoff unit for the first time tonight. Both these teams, as we said earlier, one of them is going to be 1-2 and two in the district and the other one's going to be 0-3. To say this game is pivotal is the understatement of the night. Here's Nick Kelly kicking it off. And he kicks a sky kick down to about the 20. That's Gregory. He gets it back to the middle and he's going to return it just shy of the 30-yard line. We'll call it the Macon County 30. And that's where the Tigers will go on offense with 4.58 left in the first quarter. 
I'm anxious to see what Macon County has. We didn't get to uh, see too terribly much of their offense the first time around, so see what, what they can do with a lot of field to work with. Carter brings him up. They're going to run some option. And he faked the dive to Hessen. And that, I believe, was K.J. Kitchen with the ball on the perimeter. And he is going to have a modest gain. Good job by Greenbrier on defense. They did. That linebacker had some speed running that out of back because he was moving. Kobe Wilson and Gonzer. Carson Elder with a great tackle on the option to the other side of the field, strong side of the field. Well, clearly the plan on this drive was to try and get the ball to K.J. Kitchen. And now you've got a third and ten. And the last thing you want after giving up a drive like that is to have to usher your defense right back on the field. So here's Carter. Let's see what we've got cooked up. Gregory and Kitchen. Hessen in the backfield. He's in protection. Sprint out to the right. And that pass is going to be complete to Dale Turner, sophomore running back. But that is going to be well shy of the first down. And that is going to bring up a punting situation for the Tigers. No mystery here on fourth and seven. This early in the game, that'd be, and their field position would be a bit too risky for me. Macon County having a little trouble getting their unit out there. Their personal protector wasn't out. And that was Brandon Knowles on the punt. We've got a flag down right at about the 43-yard line. We'll get that figured out for you here in a hurry, but... Barring that being on Greenbrier and an automatic first down for Macon County, the Bobcats are going to be in business with some pretty good field position here with the game tied at 7 with 3.15 left to go in the first quarter. The Zebras will try and get this straightened out for us. We've got a hold on the return team. So that is after possession. So Greenbrier will keep the ball but they're going to mark off some real estate. I think we're going to see another heavy dose of the run, taking some time off that clock. Why not? Macon County's got to come up with a stop. This has got to be a three and out here. If you're Randall Smith, you want to see your... Off, uh, you want to see your offense back on the field and you want to see your D off. Here's Young. Elder up the middle and not much going on there. Shane Hessen in on the stop. We've called his name a couple of times tonight. Very active defensive player linebacker. They're going to call it a one yard gain. It's going to bring up Second and nine. Well, folks, you can do the math. Gons are back in for Lynn. Majiglio down at the bottom of the screen. Here's Young. Tossed to the field to Elder. And he cuts it back and pounds inside. And he's still carrying, folks. And that's going to be a good gain. About five four or five and it's going to be third and five from the middle of the field just shy of the 50. That was a good tough run. 
He cut it back. Looked like he might have had a little real estate on the outside, but something tells me Carson Elder likes to pound it up inside. Now, if that was Corn Elder at Ensworth, that ball would have been on the perimeter. I can, I can promise you that. Gonzer still in the game for Lynn. And they're going to run option to Johns, and he is going to be stopped. That play had potential. Real nice job by the Tigers on defense. That's what they wanted to see happen. Looks like they're going to punt and play the field position. Fourth and two. Let's see what they do here. They are lined up in a punt formation. Their quarterback, Nick Young, is still in the game. And that could have been a procedure penalty. Their gunner was not set. And this ball is going to squib a long way. This ball does not get fielded. And this is going to end up looking like a really good punt. Good game of field position by Kirk Williams and the Bobcats. And Macon County will start the ball, start with the ball inside their own 10 with 104 left in the first quarter. A lot of ground to go over now if you're making county, and they have not shown too much offensively. They're going to have to put something together on this drive. So here's Macon County. Carter still under center. And the give is to Dale Turner. And Turner is going to pick up a short little gain of about one. Greenbrier has been very active on defense. Their defense has been all over the field. They have a lot of speed on defense. We're inside 30 seconds left of the first quarter. This thing is flying by. Second and nine. We've got motion, play action pass. Carter was looking for Kitchen and he is gonna be sacked. And I believe it was Gonzer that got him. Safety. And we've got a safety. So just like that, Greenbrier's up 9-7. And they'll be getting the ball back. And that was the last thing you wanted to see happen. And that's, you know, all that that field position game and the inability to be able to get that positive yardage on first down, then going to the play action on second down. And he was looking for Kitchen on a deep crossing route and just could not find him. Everybody was covered on that. But, you, you know, if you're Aaron Carter, you've got to throw the ball away there. You have to. That's, that's the last thing you do is take a safety. But he'll learn from it. it probably is not going to happen again. So Greenbrier will be getting the ball right back from Macon County with 13 ticks left here in the opening stanza. Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us at Play On Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. Zach Ghazi to kick it off for Macon County. After the safety, he'll be kicking it from his own 20.
Kobe Wilson looking for a spot in the wedge, and he's got something on the left side. Good job up front blocking by Greenbrier, and that's the trouble kicking off from your own 20. You are going to start sending your defense out here, and they're already at midfield. You know it's a good return when the kicker's making the tackle. He was close to getting loose, that's for sure. Great field position again for Greenbrier. Young brings him up, and we're going to have another penalty. I'm going to believe this is. I'm going to believe that this is going to be a false start on the Bobcats, and that's what it is. So first and 15, we probably have one more play here left of the first quarter. A game that is 9-7 Greenbrier after they fumbled the first play of the game, their first play from scrimmage. Carson Elder coughed it up, Macon County punched it in, but since then it's been all Greenbrier. And here's Elder. And not much doing in there. K.J. Kitchen. And Tyler Wilson in on the stop. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter. Playonsports.com will be right back with second quarter action. Adam Hollis, Dave Knott bringing you the action from Bobcat Field in Greenbrier, Tennessee. District 9 matchup between the Macon County Tigers and the Greenbrier Bobcats. And right before we went to that break, we had a false start penalty on Greenbrier, which is going to bring up a second and long for the Bobcats. Maybe a good omen. Yeah, if you recall, the first scoring drop the Bobcats had was uh, a false start. Maybe it's in the plan. Maybe it is. Give them a false sense of security. Get to, get to that first and long and second and long situation. So here we go. Nick Young, Gonzer, and Elder in the backfield. And the toss is to Elder. And a nice play. And they're making County thinks they have the ball, but Kitchen was there again. Force in the action. You got third and forever here. You might see a pass out of Greenbrier. I believe that was Tyler Searcy. Third and call it 15 or 16, Elder. And the reverse handoff into Johns, and he's got plenty of room. And Chris Johns is going to have a Bobcat first down. Great so, run. I think that was the last thing that Macon County was expecting. It's such a part of this offense. You know, the, the toss and then handing it back to that wing back. The old Delaware Sally play. So the Bobcats are in business here. Nick Young with Gonzer and Elder. And the give is to Elder. And he decides to bounce this. And Searcy misses the tackle, but Daniel Gregory comes up from his cornerback spot on support to make that tackle, but a pretty healthy gain of about seven or eight for Mr. Elder. Greenbrier has 
good, fast, hard-hitting running backs. They're not ones to shy away from a, a lick. They have a couple of boys that'll lower the shoulder. Lynn, Gonter, and Elder are all physical runners. Second, we're going to call it six or four. Gonzer inside, and he's going to pick up a couple. Looked like he thought he might have had a little more room than he did. Nice play. Guess who? K.J. Kitchen all over the field so far in this first half for Macon County. Johns comes back in after that long run. He got a blow. Kyle Kinley was in for him. So now John's back in at the wingback spot. He's in motion. The give is inside to Gonzer, and that's going to be a Bobcat first down. So they keep getting themselves into these third and two, third and threes, third and ones, and they're picking up all of them. That's exactly what you want to do anyways is get yourself third and manageable so you have a chance to get the first down. Plus it eats up a lot of clock. Well, I'm waiting for a play action home run throw here. So the Bobcats have the ball at the Macon County. We'll call it the 22 yard line. John's in motion across the formation. The give is inside to Elder. He's gonna try and bounce it again, but I don't think he's gonna have very much, although he makes something out of nothing. Hessen in on the stop. Positive yards. And that was all on him. Because there wasn't much there. We've got a second and seven. And the clock keeps ticking. 8.40 left to go in the half. Here's Young. Inside to Elder. He's got some running room. And he pounds his way down to about the 10. And I believe that'll be another Greenbrier first down. That was a huge hole. He had all types of space. Greenbrier is getting it done up front right now, and I've got a feeling that Macon County might be getting a little worn out up front. They have played a lot of defense so far here in the first half, but we still have a 9-7 football game. So they're going to call it first and 10 at about the 10 and a half. Greenbrier can get another first down inside the one. And here's Young to Elder again. Pounding his way inside to about the three. So they're going to have a second and short. Yeah, that was a great kick out by Kevin Abel to, on that end to uh, cut Elder loose. I think Carson Elder's forgotten about the fumble. Oh, I, I should say so. He is doing yeoman's work here in the first half. So it's Gonzer, Johns. And Elder in the backfield with Majiglio split out to the right. Here's Young. And the give is inside to Gonzer, and I don't believe he is in. Real nice surge by Macon County up front. Searcy and Tyler Wilson in on the stop. And it's going to be third and one. This is a big down for Greenbrier. Big down for Macon County. Exactly. Got to try and figure out a way to keep him out. Here's Young. Mr. Elder up and over. He does not have a touchdown, but he may be inside the one for a first and goal. And the officials are going to stop the clock and measure. PlayOnSports.com is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school and playoff and championship events 
in all sports from across the country. Playonsports.com. High school lives here. So while the officials bring the chains out, we want to tell you that I hope you're enjoying tonight's broadcast, but feel free to go to playonsports.com and find out some of the some of the action that's going on across the country. Just short. Inches. So they're going to call it three inches up here. Hall and Johns trade sides there to the field. The give is to Gonzer. Pounding inside. Touchdown. Paul Gonzer and the Bobcats. Cash in on the good field position they got after the safety. I tell you what, the big uglies are getting it done up front. Greenbrier leaned all over him on that drive. Really the last two drives. It has been very impressive on the ground. Nick Kelly on to try the extra point. Snap is good, hold is good, and Kelly's good. And we've got a 16 to seven ball game, so after the early turnover on the first play of the game, Macon County goes up seven nothing, three or four plays later, 16 unanswered by Greenbrier. Pretty good response to the turnover. It, that was Sometimes a turnover is all you need for motivation, and they've, they've come back strong and have eaten the clock alive, not giving Macon County a chance. So we'll get a chance to see what Macon County can do, see if they can respond with 627 left in the first half. Nick Kelly will be kicking it off for Greenbrier. And if you're Randall Smith, the head coach at Macon County, you really want to see a drive here. Even though a lot of these kids do play both ways, you want to see offensively something positive. Exactly. Even if it doesn't turn into points on this drive, a couple of first downs and moving the chains a little bit is going to be a good thing going into halftime. I completely concur with that assessment. It's, you've got to get something going, Bill, just, just a little bit before you go into the half. That's like that line from, uh, what's that movie? Catch me if you can. Doctor, do you concur? <laughs> I concur. <laughs> it's going to be Gregory, and he drops it. Picks it up and tries to find his way back to the middle of the field, but nothing doing. Nice job by Greenbrier on the coverage. James Strong, I believe, is his James Strong, number 20. It was a good tackle wrapped up. Trent Key was there. James Strong, number 22, and Trent Key, number 20, on the kickoff coverage for the Bobcats. And if you were listening closely, you heard there's 622 left to go in the half. 16 to 7. Bobcats in the green and white. Tigers making county in the white and blue. Kitchen in motion. Little wham block. And the give is inside to Hessen, who's going to pick up four or five. So Macon County going to try and get Hessen going here. Here's Carter. Hessen inside, and now that's going to bring up a third and five. The Bobcats were not having any of it. Nice job up front. Todd Lynch in on that tackle. Yeah, he slipped right through the hole and met him there. Kinley, Key, and Gonzer. 
inside at linebacker for the Bobcats are having a pretty good game, I would believe, right now, the way they are playing run defense. Carter in the shotgun. And they're going to try the speed sweep. And it is not going to be enough for a first down. And that's one of those linebackers in on the stop, Kyle Kinley. Well, if you're, if you're making County, that's what you didn't want is to give them the ball back with four minutes and 36 seconds they have to work with with the way they've been chewing clock up. Tried to get the ball to Dale Turner on the speed sweep, and Kinley was having none of it. So here's Macon County to punt again, and it is shanked. And this is bad news for Macon County because Greenbrier is in business with some field position with 4.16 left to go in the second quarter. It's got to be discouraging. So the Bobcats are going to get the ball on the 37. And it's safe to say Macon County might be in trouble. Yeah, if they don't get something rolling, could be uh, could be a long night. Here's Young, Elder. And oh my, there was a whole host of folks there. We'll try and get a name for you. That was number 86 on the tackle, but 86 is not on there. It may have been Dustin Green, but the fellow that just made the tackle certainly looks a little bigger than 50 than five foot six. So we'll get that checked out for you. But in the meantime, the Bobcats are going to have second and 12. Young's getting the signals from the sidelines, and here he comes. And Majiglio's got to be getting lonely out there. Still one-on-one -on -one coverage at the top, but here's Elder inside, and he's going to pick up about four. So it's going to bring up a third and long with 3.20 left to go in the first half. And now Macon County's got to dig in and try and come up with a stop. Third and eight. That inside handoff again to Johns, but that time, Macon County sniffed it out. We're ready for that one. Kitchen was there, as was Caleb Pedigo. Four down territory. Caleb Pedigo, six foot four, 185 pound junior. Long and was unblocked. So it's going to bring up about a fourth and six, and Greenbrier is okay to let some clock go here, and I'm not so sure Macon County's not okay with that as well. And now the Bobcats are going to take a timeout. So with 2.10 left to go in the second quarter, we're going to take a quick break during this Bobcat timeout. We'll be right back. Go for yeah, it. it may not be a yeah. bad idea. We are back. And it's Bobcat decision time, and I believe they're going to leave their offense back out on the field. They've got a fourth and about, call it a long six. And I was wrong. Here's Kobe Wilson, the punter. Open mouth, insert foot. 
Gonzer down at the bottom of the screen. And the Bobcats decided they're going to pin him down. Oh, boy. And Wilson fumbled it and then had to get rid of it in a hurry. And Macon County is going to get the ball at about their 23-yard line. So with 2.04 left to go in the half, the Tigers are going to get another crack at it offensively. And we'll see how conservative they decide they want to be. They are getting the ball to start the second half because they deferred after they won the toss. So here's Carter. Kitchen in motion as the give is inside to Hessen, and he's got a nice gain. We'll see how quick they, how quickly they decide to go here. I'm gonna call it second and three, and give him seven yards on the gain. And Macon County is huddling up and with 142, don't look like they're in a whole heck of a lot of a rush. I would say, I would say that's correct. Here's Carter. Hessen behind him, kitchen in motion. And the give is to Hessen and the Bobcats are there. A host of them. James Strong inside on the tackle for the Bobcats. They got to have something positive happen here. They need to pick up a first down so they can carry at least a sliver of momentum into the half. And you don't want to have to punt the ball. So with 50 seconds left in the 50 seconds left in the half, we've got a timeout making county, so they want to talk it over. So we've got 51 ticks left, and I think they, Dave, I think they were saying exactly what you were saying. They were thinking what you were saying, however you want to phrase it, uh, that this was a big pickup here. It's, it's like I said, it's, it's critical for their confidence to pick, to pick this first down up just so that they can have something, something to, to hang their hat on going into the half. Besides three and out, three and out, three and out. They really have, uh, you know, and, and, and let's not take credit away from Greenbrier because they're active on defense. Uh, but Macon County just has not looked crisp uh, up front, you know, keeping blocks alive. And there hasn't been a whole lot of running room. A couple of times they've tried to get outside, and it just looks like Greenbrier's pursuit is almost – anticipating where the ball's going and they're you know they've been like starving dogs to the meat wagon every time they've tried to get outside greenbrier is just beating them to the blocks can't set a block when the guy's already there he just they're just getting beat to the block and which turns into three and outs looks like they're going to take a measurement here well this is a beautiful facility here in greenbrier tennessee Beautiful drive here up by 65 from where I came from and First pull, down. pulled in and they were tailgating out in the parking lot and some of the barbecue smelled pretty good. It did, it did. I noticed that when I walked in myself. They do have a nice facility here, uh, nice bleachers, good crowd tonight too. For Real good crowd for homecoming and we had, uh, there were a bunch of cars lined up with, you know, convertibles, the tops down and. Homecoming queen coming through and all that, all that jazz. It's a great night to be in Greenbrier, Tennessee, for this District 9 game. And after the measurement, they gave Macon County the first down. So with 51 ticks left on the clock here in the opening half, Aaron Carter is going to be in shotgun. Kitchen. And they try and give it inside to Hessen, and they do. Look like they were a little confused, and he's going to pick up about a yard. And I think the Tigers are going to be okay not taking a shot here and running out the clock and getting out of here down 16 to 7. And it starts to tick away. But the good thing that they can also look at 
16 to 7 is not the end of the world. They're a lot better off than they could have been. As, oh, as there's as far as the score goes. No, no question, no question. But on the flip side of that, without the turnover, they're you know they haven't moved the ball at all tonight. Here's Carter, and his pass is going to fall incomplete, which is going to bring up a third and long with three seconds left in this opening half. So if you weren't with us early. Greenbrier received the opening kickoff, and on the first play from scrimmage, Carson Elder was hit and coughed it up, and three plays later, Macon County took it in for our first score of the ball game to make it 7-0. Since then, it's been all Bobcats. Two touchdowns and a safety. Two extra points on that gives you 16, and that's where we are, 16-7. Three ticks left here. Carter's probably just going to give it inside to Hessen. That's what he does. And that carry is going to end the opening half. We hope you enjoyed the opening half here from Bobcat Stadium. We will be back with the halftime show in just a few minutes. Again, our halftime score... Greenbrier, 16, Macon County, 7. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. <laughs> All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. Stream, camera three, beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. One shot at this. Stream, camera three, beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, 
Go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot at this. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're going to come at you. One shot at this.
can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this. Welcome back to Bobcat Field in Greenbrier, Tennessee, where we are going to be entertained by the Greenbrier Bobcat Marching Band. We've got about nine minutes left of halftime, and we wanted to be able to show you the Greenbrier Marching Band. 16-7 halftime score, Greenbrier leads. Enjoy the show.
better up here. Ah, that's good stuff. A Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. We can get a player up here. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. A Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to. Welcome back to a beautiful evening here in Greenbrier, Tennessee. You can see the moon overhead. We've got a beautiful night for football, and we've got a great game on our hands. As Greenbrier at homecoming leads Macon County 16-7. I'm Adam Hollis along with Dave Knott. Chris Murian helping produce this terrific football game tonight. Chris smiled at me, started chuckling, and our videographer for tonight's game, Jimmy G, Jim Gilmartin, and Dave what do you think Macon County needs to do here uh, to get kind of get it back going in, in the right direction? They need to get some offense going. They need to figure something out. It'll be interesting to see what kind of uh, adjustments they've made at the half, if, if they've seen anything that, that they could do differently to move the ball. And, and uh, again, it's, it's not as bad as it could be. They're still in a position score-wise where they can stick with their game plan. They don't have to go to the pass just yet, so it, it, now is not the time to fret. It's time to uh, get back to fundamentals, block, move the ball, score touchdowns. Right now, I don't know if you can hear it in the background, but they are playing Kenny Chesney, Boys of Fall. And little known fact, Kenny Chesney filmed his Boys of Fall video right here at Bobcat Field in Greenbrier, Tennessee. Did, did, I, did I stump you? You did. You stumped me for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. And so I was I was actually surprised pregame that we did not hear a little boys of fall by Kenny Chesney. I hope you're enjoying the dulcet sounds. I'm going to have to sharpen up on my Kenny Chesney history. We are uh, heading into a second half here where I've got to think the halftime speeches for both these clubs was very different. What were they saying in the Greenbrier locker room? To keep doing what they're doing, keep moving the ball, keep stopping them on defense. Just keep doing what you're doing. Don't uh, don't let them get back in the game. You got to get to the point where you can put them away and uh, not let them hang around. And if I was a fly on the wall in Macon County's locker room, what did I hear from Coach Smith? Get to your blocks a little bit sooner. Hold on to your blocks. Don't let your blocks go once you get them. Hold on to your blocks so that they can't make a tackle. And, and like I said, you know, it's, it's not over for them. They don't have to stray from their game plan. Not not time to start worrying or fretting. It's just uh, just time to go out there, do your job, and uh, get it done. It was a relatively clean half from a penalty perspective. Certainly if you've been watching any football they play on Sunday, it's been a little, little bit different. But Greenbrier was able to overcome a couple of early penalties to start a couple of drives which leads you to believe that offensively they're just you know they're they're clicking on all cylinders I've been extremely impressed with their running game and you know especially Mr. Elder he's been nothing short of sensational take away that fumble early in the game he responded very nicely oh uh, he he responded just just like a it's like a se senior should you uh you learn from it you go on and you do your best for it to not happen again well, Macon County is going to get the ball here to start the second half. And I think it's no secret that they really need to go on a drive here and establish at least a field position game. Uh, like you said, they are not in an insurmountable hole down nine, but you'd like to think that you probably got to get something going here in the third quarter. And you obviously want to, if you're making county, you want to score before Greenbrier scores another one and it gets out of hand. Oh, yeah, they, they definitely definitely have to get something going just, just on the 
momentum and, and confidence side of things. Just so that they they know mentally they can get it done. They're, they're not three and out, three and out, three and out. They're getting up there, putting some, stringing some drives together. You may not necessarily score, but you still want to flip the field on them and uh, make Greenbrier work. So here's Nick Kelly to kick off for the Bobcats. Bobcats in green and white. Macon County, the visitors in white with the blue helmets. Macon County is bunched. Dylan Gregory back with Dale Turner. And they squib it. And Macon County is going to have good field position on the 30. So clearly they're okay letting them have it. And that was Tanner Lohorn, 5'7", 135-pound freshman running back on the Recovered squib kick and didn't try to do too much with it. Just said, hey, good coach, we're, we're on O. That was good hands on his part. Did the right thing. Why, why risk a fumble? Just go down with it. You got good field position. Go with it. So here's Macon County to start the half. And Carter's going to give it inside to Hessen. The same way they started the second, the same way they they ended the half, I should say. And that was Mr. Johns in on the tackle. Chris Johns, the wing back, also plays safety for the Bobcats. Came downhill and made a play. So we're going to have second and ten. Not the way you wanted to have the second half start if you're a Tiger. Kitchen in the wing down to the bottom. Here's Turner in motion. Carter's going to run the option to the field, and he keeps it in a nice little nifty run. He's going to have about five, maybe maybe six. Going to bring up a third and four. Nice job running the option. Seemed like he kind of hesitated a couple of times, reading off his key, and then finally decided to tuck it away and take off. Positive yards. This would be a huge first down for Macon County if they can pick up this third and five. Gregory, Kitchen, and Turner spread out to the field. Hessens in the backfield with Carter. Carter's going to drop back and throw. And he's going to get flushed and a good little scramble, and he's going to be close to the first down. They may mark him just short on the scramble. He did not have anything he liked down the field and tucked it away. And this will be decision time here for Macon County. I mean, it is fourth and inches. Looks like they're going to stay out there and try to pick this one up. No, he's switching them out. So decision time for Randall Smith, and I think we know what he's going to do. He's going to run his punt unit onto the field. And Brandon Knowles, the 5'9", 130-pound sophomore, will be back there to punt it away for the Tigers. Elder back to receive it. And this ball is going to take a hop or two. And Elder's going to stay away. And so on fourth and short, Macon County decides they're going to play the field position game. Possibly feeling better about some adjustments they made defensively at halftime. And Greenbrier is going to have a long way to go getting the ball on their own 17. I think punting right there also shows your team, you know, this is not the time to panic. You know, th this game is still in reach. And uh, go out there, do your job, play some defense, get it back, good field position. Yeah, Dave, that's a, that's a really good point. You go for it there and you don't make it. You really open yourself up to a lot of second guessing. You punt it away. You still kind of play in the field position game pretty well. And now you need your defense to step up and make a stop. And here's Elder. And he tries to bounce it outside, and he's going to be run down, I believe. That was Hessen Kitchen. That was a great pursuit angle to cut down on any extra yardage that could have been gained. 
So it's going to be, and they're going to call it no gain, so it's going to be second and ten. And I think that play, I think Elder wanted to go inside there, and I think Macon County is doing such a good job at the linebacker position, fitting everything right now. Elder's got no place to go but to bounce it. Hall and John's on the trade to the field, and it's going to be the give inside. And that is going to be Paul Gonzer, who after the first drive and a half, I'd say, for Greenbrier, has gotten most of the carries inside. It was Nikki Lynn early, and now it's been a steady diet of Gonzer inside. They may be trying to, to keep uh, Nikki Lynn fresh to uh, play on the defensive side of the ball. Lynn is a guy that starts both ways at fullback and defensive end for the Bobcats. 8.50 to go in the third quarter. And Greenbrier's got a third and five, and Macon County needs a stop. John's in motion. The give is to Elder. It's strung out again, and I believe that's Dylan Gregory up on the stop for Macon County, so they get what they want, Dave. Let's see where they mark it. About a yard short. So fourth and one, and the Bobcats are going to punt it back to the Tigers of Macon County. Aaron Carter, the quarterback for Macon County, is back to receive Kobe Wilson, the punter. Good snap, and Kobe Wilson gets off a good kick. And this ball is going to get out of bounds. I believe they're going to mark it at about the 41-yard line where Macon County will take over with 7.58 left to go in the third quarter. So Macon County doesn't panic. They don't go for it on fourth and short. They punt it away. They get the stop. And they got good field position. So Aaron Carter and the Tiger offense will take over at their own 41. And we'll see if they can get busy on offense. They have not scored since the opening drive of the game, and that was on a short field on a turnover. So they have not sustained a drive. Turner in motion. The gives inside to Hessen, and nothing doing inside. Maybe a couple. Nikki Lynn in there on the stop. Brady Doris was also there showing up. Kyle Kinley's the signal caller for this Greenbrier defense, and they are a good one. So they're going to give him two, and it's going to be second and eight, Macon County. Gregory split out wide to the bottom of the field. Carter in the shotgun on second and eight. Kitchen is in motion, and the give is inside to Hessen. And he's going to have no gain. He's going to have a loss. Looked like that handoff was a little slow. Looked like the quarterback bobbled it. Coming out of the shotgun. It looks like a couple of times they've been in the shotgun. The, the mesh and the exchanges have not been clean. A little slow. A little slow. Which there again gives the defense time to catch up. So James Strong checks in on defense for Greenbrier for Trent Key on third and 12. Here's Carter back under center. The give is inside to Kitchen and he is not going to have much room inside, maybe a couple. And Macon County and the Tigers are going to have to punt it back. Still think punting's the right call. Now's the time not to panic again, you know. You're still within reach. That ball is almost blocked. And it's a short kick and it's getting worse. Kyle Kinley came off the edge and almost had that punt blocked. That punt rolled back to where the line, of, the line of scrimmage was on the 
Brandon Knowles did all he could do to get that punt off. That operation time was not sharp. And now Greenbrier will have it at the 42, the plus 42, going in. Gave their field position away. And the give is to Elder inside and not much going on inside. Both defense seem to have stiffened up quite a bit. What I was going to say, I think Macon County may have seen something at the half in uh, Greenbrier's offense. That was Terry Sliger on the tackle, 6'2", 215-pound freshman in wow. on that stop. Wow. Second and call at nine. They're going to try Elder inside, and he bounces it, and he's got some room to the outside. And Carter is all that stood between him and six. And he's going to be pushed out of bounds at the 20, but a first down for the Bobcats. Good, strong run. Got the outside and uh, took off. Greenbrier's blocking up to this point has been phenomenal. They stay on their blocks and uh, give just all kinds of time for the running backs to take off. So here's Young, and the give is inside to Gonzer to keep him honest and maybe give Elder a breather. But that was a productive play inside. And the Bobcats will wear you out with this stable of fellas that can carry the, carry the football. And if it's not Elder, it's Lynn. If it's not Lynn, it's Gonzer. If it's not Gonzer, it's Johns. they have got a stable. And their leading rusher, J.R. Brown, was injured last week. Here's Elder inside. Good cut. And he pounds his way close to another Greenbrier first down. It's going to be third and one. 4 11 remaining third quarter. Greenbrier looking to extend a 16 to 7 lead. And they've got something cooking. Third and two. What do you think? Keep doing what you're doing. It seems to be working. Looks El like uh, Elder, Gonzer, or Johns, right? Here's Young. The give is to Gonzer. And he's got some room, and he's pounding it inside the five to about the four. And that's going to be a Bobcat first down. They're just getting it done up front. They are doing their jobs up front. Doris, Kenny Abel, Tyler Pendergrass, Kevin Abel and Todd Lynch, Tyler Hall at tight end. Yeoman's work on this drive. Seeing some hands on the hips out of the defense right now. They've got to be tired. 340 remaining in the third quarter, and here's Young bringing them up. And we're going to have a procedure penalty. It was going to be Elder one more time on the carry. With Kenny Abel on the pull. We haven't seen a whole heck of a lot of balls being put in the air. Up to this point, Greenbrier hasn't needed to. I believe Macon County completed a pass in the first quarter on a sprint out for two or three yards. But other than that, That's it. I can't remember anything really happening in the pass game. Both of these teams coming in are running attacks. Here's Young. The give is to Elder. He bounces it. He's got a touchdown. Carson Elder just inside the pylon. 22-7 Bobcats. And if you're Macon County, you wanted to score first and you didn't. So now, where do you go from here? Because clearly, you don't feel real comfortable throwing the football 
but you really need to. Do you need to throw the football? I think if they find that fine balance between run and throw, it'll open up a lot of things that uh, hasn't been there before. Here's the line drive kick by Nick Kelly, and it squirts through the left upright. And they'll get another one for that attempt. So it's 23-7, 3-17 left third quarter. And Make It County is going to get it back after Nick Kelly sets it and kicks it back to him. Do you want to watch more of your school's great matchups like the game you're enjoying here tonight? Tell your school to sign up for Play On Sports School Broadcast Program. The program allows schools to broadcast all their games and other activities on the web on playonsports.com website. For more information, go to playonsports.com slash SBP. That's SBP for School Broadcast Program. Well, this is where the rubber meets the road here for, for Macon County. You're on the road. You're down 23-7. You really have not been able to get anything going offensively. There's 317 left in the third quarter. But you still have 15-plus 15, 15 minutes of football. It's probably not panic time, but it's getting close it's, to where you need to. It's getting close. Yeah. It's getting close. But... Uh, they score, it's 14-23. It's They're still in the ball game. They get, they get a quick score. So the deep kick goes to Turner. And he is met by number 22, James Strong. That's the second good tackle James Strong has had on special teams. He has been impressive on special teams tonight. And both, t both tackles that I can remember – were pretty good hits. Exactly. They were. That's my recollection. But he's a kid that plays a lot of football for them on the defensive side of the ball. Right, right. He's made several tackles on the defensive side already this evening. Let's see what Macon County's got cooked up for him. Well, the Tigers are going to be in the shotgun here with Carter. Hessens in the backfield with him. And they're going to run some option to the field, and Carter's got room, and now he deals it late to Hessen up the left side. And he's going to be into Bobcat territory, and that play looked good. The best-looking play we've seen all night out of Macon County. And put the, put the linebacker or the safety in a precarious situation. Do I take the quarterback? Do I take the pitch? He chose the quarterback and uh, should have chose the pitch. Well, they had three wide receivers to the field there, and – with man coverage and those guys releasing, it's something something good there. So Carter's in the shotgun again. They're going to have a first and 10 at the 49. Turner's the motion man to get to trips, and now he's going to pitch it out to Hessen, and Hessen's going to cut it back. And that was not a good decision. He should have kept running towards the sideline. I think he got a few positive yards out of it, but... There again, I'm up here, so he probably knows something I don't. Well, that was Brett Laney on the stop for Greenbrier. And it looked like Hessen could have at least gotten back to the line of scrimmage and maybe able to get one on that toss and tried to turn it into a huge play. Instead, it ends up being a pretty good loss. So we're going to have second and 15 from the middle of the field. And Carter is back under center. And he's going to run some option keeper. He's going to pick up a couple, but we've got a flag, Dave. That was a great hit. That was a great hit by Kinley. He was sticking with the quarterback all the way on that one. Let's see what this seems to be a chop. So they're going to call a chop block. And that's going to be 15-yard penalty. And that is going to make it second in a million. Those are drive killers right there. Especially if you're making county and you've 
can count the explosive plays you've been able to generate on two fingers. Exactly. So Carter's back in the shotgun. Trips to the field again, and he wants to throw it, and he bangs the slant inside. And that's Kitchen. And he's going to get all but eight of it back on second down, and it's going to be third and seven. So Carter put that throw on the money. This is a good pass catch. That's what they needed to get back in some type of respectable third down. Much more man manageable than what it could have been. Yeah, third and a million, not a lot of calls on the call sheet, I would imagine. I like what I'm seeing from Carter in the option game, and he's showing flashes. Let's just say that. And he's going to have to spark up a little bit more with 133 left to go in the third quarter. Down 23-7. Play action. He's going to throw the bubble, and it's going to be well defensed. He was trying to get Stephen Reagan on the bubble screen, but Gonzer was there, and so was Wilson. It was a nice open field tackle. Fourth Co down. Kobe Wilson was out on an island and made the play. So now you've got fourth and nine. Looks like they're going to go for this one. 54 seconds left in the third quarter. And I guess they figure, why not? Exactly. Getting down to that time where you got to start making some rash decisions. Turner and Gregory at the top of the screen. Carter, play action. He scrambles, he's flushed, and he's got room. And he's got the first down, and he's going to get out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. And a Tiger first down. Good hard run. That's what they needed. Twenty-eight seconds left in the third quarter, and Macon County starting to show some life offensively. Carter back in the shotgun. He's got Austin Crawford at the bottom of the screen with Kitchen, Turner, and Gregory up top. Hessen in the backfield. Hessen stays in in protection. Here's Carter trying to hit Gregory on the out and just missed him. That's where they need to really mix up the run and pass. Keep Greenbrier guessing. A draw, a draw play, if mm -hmm. it's in the offense, might not be a bad call, Dave. No, I agree with that. Draw would be, I think would be a good, especially after two pass throws. These linebackers have softened up a little bit. And here's Carter, basically an empty backfield. And he's going to try and sprint to his left, and he's going to get sacked and pulled up. And that was sudden. And that was Trent Key. Well, he shot right through there, didn't he? That was wow. A, that was a quick play. Clearly, Trent Key was not responsible in coverage. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter. And we've got a 23-7 ball game. And Macon County starting to show some signs of life offensively. But their minus plays have been killers. You, you can't have positive and then the minuses and the amount of yardages that they seem to be losing after a good play. You just... You can't do that and advance the ball at the same time. But they have uh, gotten some positives going. Now they just need to poke it in the end zone and uh, get back in the game. So it's going to be third and 18 at the 39 when we come back. Folks, Play on Sports is on Facebook and Twitter, giving you news and information and links to great highlights. Follow us on Play on Sports. Or follow us at Play on Sports on both Facebook and Twitter. 
I am absolutely butchering this read. You can also access thousands of live and on-demand games on YouTube at youtube.com slash playonnetwork. Keep up with all the high school action every week from your destination for high school sports, playonsports.com. And as we come back to the action, we're going to have a third and 18 at the 39. And the next time I try and do a read for play on sports, I'll try and be accurate. What do you think, Chris? Give me the nod. Here's Carter. Turner in motion. Play action. He's going deep for Kitchen. And it's going to be almost picked off by Johns. Pretty good coverage there. Greenbrier wasn't fooled. Fantastic coverage right there. It seems like they knew what was going to happen. They had two guys in the vicinity of where the ball was coming down. So back been, to the drawing board. I've been pretty impressed with Johns tonight. few times offensively he's gotten his number called, he's delivered, and he's been very steady on defense. That's what you want is consistency on, on either side of the ball. It's, and he has been Mr. Consistency thus far tonight. Has had several of the green briars. I concur. I got you back. Very nice. Fourth and 18. Here's Carter. Biggest play of the game for the Tigers. Hessen stays in to help him protect. Carter lets it go, and it's complete. And it's Kitchen, but it's going to be short of the first down. So Carter pulled the trigger and completed one to KJ Kitchen, but it wasn't enough real estate to move the chains and they're going to turn it back over to the Bobcats. Yeah, I've got a sneaky suspicion we're going to see a lot of a lot of the same thing we've been seeing out of Greenbrier. They're going to chew that clock up, try to get it in third and short, and, uh, of course, pick up the first down and keep the clock rolling. 11.48 left in the fourth quarter. 23-7 Bobcats. They're moving from left to right on your screen. Green and white uniforms, blue and white for Macon County. Here's Gonzer. He bounces it inside, and Carter is going to be on the tackle. It's going to be a gain of about four or five. I believe I saw a flag. I believe we may have a hold. Why would Greenbrier want to start out without a penalty? That's what I was thinking before. I mean, they need to get a false start or, or something something like and that. And if they don't get the false start, they make sure they get the holding penalty. Exactly. exactly. They, they work well off of penalties. They, they like to dig themselves out of a hole, and they've done it with tremendous success all night tonight. So that is indeed going to be a hold on Greenbrier, and that is going to negate what was a pretty good play. Seriously, you didn't know that Kenny Chesney filmed the boys of fall at this stadium? I did not. That's a, I do now. I thought that was a prerequisite to know before you drove in here. No, I'll, I'll have to start doing my site research a little bit more <laughs> diligently. Can you find that on Wikipedia? First and 15 for the Bobcats, who have basically been in control since early in this game. They lead 23-7. And here's Elder. And he's not going to have very much going on. Kitchen on the tackle. Who's been, Kitchen's been extremely active for Macon County. I've got to think when the coaches go watch this film tomorrow, they're going to like what they see from KJ Kitchen. They're going to see a lot of positives. With maybe a few negatives thrown in, these false starts and holdings. But truth be told, it's been a relatively clean glint. Uh, butchered that like you did the uh, the read there. Uh, don't follow my lead. A clean game as far as penalties go. I agree. I agree. It has been a fast-moving, pretty clean game. Here's Young. Inside to Johns. Pounding away inside, still on his feet and looking to break loose. And I cannot believe that Chris Johns just turned that into a first down. And we've got flags. So just as we said it was a clean game, we've got hankies on the last two plays. But that was a fantastic run by Chris Johns. It was a fantastic run. Let's see what the call. I guess I jinxed him. We may have a face mask. That's kind of what I'm looking at. And here's our call. 
You'll see it before I can say it because Jimmy G, Jim Gilmartin, our camera guy, is top shelf. Doing a fantastic job as always. So when we try and sort that out, I think we've got two personal fouls. Unsportsmanlike conduct without the benefit of the referee's microphone, which we get to hear on Saturdays and Sundays. Friday nights, not as sophisticated yet. Not yet. They're catching up, though. It'll probably be coming pretty soon. This may not be offsetting. This may just be against Greenbrier. Mm, that negates a beautiful run, too. And that was a pretty terrific run by Mr. Johns, who has been nothing short of impressive all night tonight. This is a good chance for Macon County to uh, stand firm and then uh, get good field position on the punt. Yeah, this would be a golden opportunity if you can get them three and out here. And they're gonna, with the personal fouls, they are gonna reset the chains. So because it was a first down on the carry and the flags came after the play, after the first down was made, they're going to make it a first and ten. But a whole lot of real estate was lost there. It certainly was. And I believe that Nick Young just got Macon County to jump. See what the penalty is. No, they're going to get false start on. Gr oh, wait. Oh, okay. I think, that okay. Was I think that he was meant to say encroachment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that was supposed to be encroachment on the defense. Neutral zone violation. They're going to mark off five against Macon County, so that's going to bring up a first and five for Greenbrier. Got a little fooled by the call there. I did, I did as well. Here's Young under center. Give us to Gosner inside. And he may pick up one, maybe two. Not much going inside. Macon County was stout. Gosner's been a workhorse this evening. He really has. It, it looked like it was going to be a lot of Nicky Lynn from the fullback spot early. And Nicky Lynn had a couple of good carries, but Gosner has been steady in there. Consistent. So we've got second and about three. They gave him two on the carry. And here's Young. And they're going to go to Elder, and he ducks it inside, and he is going to have a first down. Aaron Carter with a pretty good lick from the safety spot, but not after Carson Elder picks up another Bobcat first down with 9.25 left to go in the game. Macon County has got to come up with a stop somewhere to uh, get the ball back, getting down to that panic time. You, you really, other than the first series, felt like Greenbrier wasn't in control mm -hmm. of the game. It really feels like it's been controlled by the Bobcats. Oh, complete and totally. Offensive, defensive, special teams, they've been all over it. So they're going to go back to the power play one more time, and Elder is going to meet Mr. Carter again one more time, but that is going to be a gain of about four. So second and six with just under nine minutes left to go in the game, 23-7 Bobcats. And the Greenbrier ground attack continues. They're pounding them. That defense has got to be getting tired. Starting uh, People up front are going to start taking control. And there's Gonzer inside, and he's close to another Greenbrier first down. I believe this is going to be about third and two, third and three. But as you said earlier, Dave brought up a good point, a manageable third down call. That seems to be what they've been doing all night is getting it to a manageable third down and then converting. At the, at the same time, you're picking up first downs, marching down the field, and you are chewing the clock up. 
Majiglio down at the bottom of the screen. And, boy, I was hoping he was going to get a ball tonight because it took me about 15 minutes to learn how to say his name. But here's Gonzer. And Aaron Carter can't bring him down. And Gonzer with another tough run up the middle, and that's going to be another Greenbrier first down, another set of downs for the Bobcats. 5'11", 157, keeps those legs turning. Picks up a first down, good run. So 16-7 was our halftime score. It's 23-7 now. And Greenbrier has looked very efficient. Here's Elder, but we've got a penalty flag down after a gain of four by Carson Elder. So we'll, we jinxed it. It looks to be in that holding area. We jinxed it. Because as soon as we started talking about how few penalties and how clean the game has been, We've had nonstop penalties, I'll, and this is going to be a hold on Greenbrier. I'll take responsibility for that. That was my fault. And our producer, Chris Murian, while I was not paying attention, has opened my bag of almonds. Those, them's a fighting words. You never open a man's almonds. <laughs> First and 22, Dave. First and 22, if I'm Greenbrier, I keep doing what I'm doing. Guess who? Here comes Thumper, five more. <laughs> Gonna bring up a second and 15. going to be second and 16, second and 17. My producer trying to get back on my good side by putting the almonds in front of me. The damage has been done. The damage has been done. And a lot of damage is getting done up front by Greenbrier. Their offensive line just asserting their will all night. Here's Young. Under center. Toss to Elder. Cuts it back. Now bounces it back outside. A good stiff arm is going to get him about to the 50-yard line. And that is going to be just short of a first down where they're marking it, but it's going to bring up the Dave Not manageable third down call. Call it third and short. All night long. Real short. I've seen more third downs tonight than I have all season. Third and, we'll call it third and about half a yard. Young's getting the signal from the sidelines, and he jumps back in the huddle, and I believe that we are going to have Mr. Gonzer and Elder behind Young. John's at the wing, Majiglio down at the bottom of the screen. And we're going to have another penalty. 5.49 remaining in the fourth quarter. 23-7 Greenbrier. They've outscored Macon County 7-0 here at the sec in the second half. It was 16-7 at halftime. And we've got a false start on Greenbrier. So now, third and not so manageable. We'll see what happens. Third, we'll call it six. Macon County needs to stiffen up right here. Don't let them pick it up. Young's going to give it to Elder, and not much going on. Gonzer was trying to lead the way, but Stephen Kowicki was there, stood Gonzer up in the hole, and Elder had no place to go. So fourth and five. Greenbrier's going to punt it, but they're probably going to milk some clock here, I would imagine, Dave. Oh, for sure. They're going to. I wouldn't be surprised if they ran it all the way down and then called timeout. They may want to save them just in case. We've got under five minutes remaining. High snap, but Wilson gets it off. And he's going to get it to roll. Carter could not field it, and this ball is going to be touched down at about the Macon County 12-yard line where they 
and Aaron Carter will take over offensively, and now it's time to air it out. It's time to put some air under the ball and see what happens. That's for sure. So while Macon County gets ready to go on offense, PlayOnSports.com is not only your destination for Friday night football action, but it's also the place for the most comprehensive coverage of high school playoff and championship events in all sports from across the country. PlayOnSports.com. High school lives here. Carter takes the snap, and the give is inside to Hessen for a short gain. We'll call it four, but Dave, they're going to need a little bit more than four yards and a cloud of dust at this point to get back in this one. Yeah, four yards of pop is not going to help you with four, 13, 12, 11 left in the football game. Just like the end of the second quarter, getting into halftime, they don't look like they're in that much of a rush offensively to get plays off. Here's Dale Turner. Kind of outruns his guard, but he's got some room outside, and he's got a first down. He makes a nice move on Johns. He's down the right sideline. And he's going to finally be pushed out of bounds by Carson Elder. What a great run, positive, positive run. If you're a Tiger fan, you're probably saying, where was that all day? But that was a good run. Put a nice move on Johns downfield, too. He sure did. He had blockers, too. So here's Carter back under center. 344 remaining in the fourth quarter. Play action. He was looking for Turner. He's got nothing. And he's going to be knocked out of bounds on the Macon County sideline. Time like that is when you just need to throw it away. Stops the clock, keeps you from getting hit. And keeps you from losing yards. Yeah, Carter looked like he took a pretty good lick on the far sideline from a host of Greenbrier, Greenbrier defenders. So that's going to bring up second and 14 at the 44. And I think from a confidence standpoint, Macon County would love to be able to punch one in and say, we were able to drive the ball and score, right. not just have the seven points coming on the short field. Right on the opening drive of the game. So here's Carter. He puts Turner, actually, that's Kitchen in motion, and Kitchen gets the toss, and Carson Elder is having none of it. Inside-out tackle by Carson Elder, who I would have to say would be our playonsports.com player of the game. He has gotten it done tonight. Both sides of the ball, he has gotten it done. So we've got third and 12, and we are just inside of three minutes remaining in the game. Carter comes into the huddle. Macon County not in a huge rush here. I'm sure they would love to be able to punch one in before this thing's over. 23-7 Bobcats. Greenbrier's been on top pretty much the whole way. They were down 7-0. And they've scored 23 unanswered, but here's Carter on the keeper. Elder on the tackle. But they are getting the ball on the perimeter here late. So for a young football team, Randall Smith's got to feel good about the way their kids are still competing. That's one thing. You don't want, you just, you don't want them to give up. You want them to play to the very end, and it seems like that's what they're doing right now, just playing to the end. Twenty-three unanswered by Greenbrier. 
pretty sound football game. A few penalties. Few I'm penalties. sure they like to clean up. Which they'll go back and look at film and get all that cleaned up. And Here's Carter on the option and he decides to keep it and probably a good decision as he picks up another five or six. Kinley on the tackle. And I believe Trent Key also in on the stop. So it's going to be second, call it a short four or a long three, 140 left here in the fourth quarter. Carter's got two receivers down to his left, Turner and Gregory, two up to his right, Kitchen is one of them. Bad snap, and Carter scrambling for his life. Twist and turn, and that play had doom written from the start on the bad snap. I've noticed several times that he's been in the gun, that in the shotgun, that he has fumbled, or, or not necessarily fumbled, but bobbled the snap, which slows the play up, doesn't let you make your reads. Right, timing of everything is just shot when you can't get a good shotgun snap. It really needs to be fired back there. It needs to be pretty sharp. It would be great if the quarterback can get it right in front of his chest every time. Obviously, that can't happen every time, but when it's dribbling on the ground, that sure is not conducive to a productive football play from the shotgun. We're inside of 40 seconds. Here's Carter. Back to pass. He's throwing it deep. He's got a man, and Kitchen can't hang on. I don't know if he would have been in bounds there anyway, but at least they're taking a couple of, at least they took a shot at the end zone there, trying to get some points. 33 seconds left in the ball game. And we're down to one play. Fourth and five. They're starting to file out here at Bobcat Stadium. Beautiful venue for a football game. If you live anywhere north of the airport, Please come out here and check out a football game at Bobcat Stadium. Great atmosphere. Folks at Greenbrier could not have been nicer. They didn't treat Macon County too well, but that's to be expected. Here's Carter. He was trying to throw it all the way back across the field to Turner, but he's got some room on the outside, puts his shoulder down, and he is close to a touchdown, but he's got a first down, I believe, inside the five with 24 seconds left in the game. Macon County's got all three of their timeouts left, so let's see if they decide to use one. We're inside of 20 seconds. Carter's been done a nice job using his legs. This drive, been able to get outside and make some plays. The give is inside to Hessen, and he is just short. I didn't even see him. I haven't seen them signal a touchdown. They're calling it a touchdown. It looked like it was good from up here. So Hessen's in for the touchdown for Macon County. Cutting it to 23-13 with six seconds left. And sorry for the less than dramatic touchdown call for you, but I could not see the officials signaling touchdown. Did you see anybody signal I touchdown? Did. I did not see any signal touchdown. Well, there's the extra point. Zach Gazi drills it. So we've got a 23-14 ball game. So Macon County sandwiched 23 points by Greenbrier with a touchdown on their opening drive and then a touchdown with six seconds left in the game. Everything in between was all Greenbrier. All Greenbrier, no questions asked about that. But Don't give up yet. I don't know if you watched the Titans game last week. Anything can happen with these onsides. I did not get a chance to watch it, but I did listen to it on the radio. On my drive down to Atlanta, I got to hear Frank Wycheck and Mike Keith bring me all the action. And it sounded like a wild one. Oh, it was crazy. Never seen anything like it. Greenbrier is expecting an onside kick here with six seconds left. Down nine is Macon County. Greenbrier leads at 23-14. Six ticks left. 
Looks like Macon County might be setting up for an onsides kick. So Greenbrier's ready. Here's Ghazi on the approach. And he's going to kick a little dribbler down the right hand, uh, right sideline. And it's going to be down by Carson Elder. And the clock went from three seconds to five. Uh, actually, it, it did. It went from six to five. I stand correct. I thought I saw three up there. Starting to get dizzy. Good to see the old-fashioned victory play here. Best play in football. So we're going to have a knee, and we're going to have a 23-14 final. Young takes the snap and takes a knee, and that is going to do it. They're going to shake it up. 23-14 Greenbrier in impressive fashion at their homecoming. Defeats Macon County. And we will be right back with the post-game wrap-up right after this. Again, 23-14 final. Greenbrier defeats Macon County. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? Start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. We're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program, go to playonsports.com slash SBP.
Well, we are back with the post-game show. We were hoping to get Carson Elder from Greenbrier up here to chat for a few minutes, but we'll wrap it up without him, but let everybody know that he was the PlayOnSports.com player of the game. And, Dave, an impressive effort. Uh, two teams coming into uh, District 9 contest tonight, both needing to win, both 0-2 coming in. Something had to give, and Greenbrier really showed up. Other than that little hiccup in the, the – kickoff at the very first of the game they had complete and total control offense defense Macon County was three and out three and out three and out they couldn't get anything going offensively and uh, Greenbrier chewed the clock up and ran over them it really did shorten the game and both teams came in with the plan of, of being able to run the football Greenbrier obviously did it a little more effectively tonight and they win the game 23-14 and Macon County Scores 14 points in between their 14 is 23 by, by Greenbrier. And, you know, Elder, who was the player of the game, coughs up that first, mm. the first play from scrimmage and rebounds nicely with a super effort. I tell you, after, after that uh, fumble, I think uh, he wasn't going to let that happen again. He was going to carry the pill as far, as far as he could and not drop it. But uh, it was a good game. The guys up front, offensive linemen, they did a great job. They were made it easy for the uh, running back. They opened up holes that, that I could run through. Green, <laughs> Greenbrier was, was pretty dominant up front. At the end of the game, Macon County got a couple of things going. Carter started running the ball a little bit uh, from the quarterback position. They got a, a couple of nice plays out of Turner. Uh, Hessen was pretty consistent all night. Uh, the other guy for Greenbrier, though, that really wore, wore Macon County down was Chris Johns. Mm-hmm. But he had a he had a good game as well, and both sides of the ball. It's tough to play both sides of the, sides of the ball and still be effective on both of them. But they they got the job done tonight and uh, walk away with their first victory in nine two a. So Greenbrier is going to go to one and two in the district, and we're going to drop Macon County to zero and three in the district. And it was a pleasure doing the game with you tonight, Dave. Thanks well, a lot. I likewise. had fun, and it was nice to come where the Boys of Fall was filmed. Kenny Chesney video, which I'm a little disappointed you didn't know. Don't go anywhere. Playonsports.com is your destination for high school sports. And once you click off this game, stay on playonsports.com. I'm sure there's something on the West Coast in California or Colorado or one of the other states that we're in where you can watch exciting high school action. Until next week, thanks for tuning in. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. We're gonna come at you. One shot at this.